Hey everyone, I'm TCS23 and welcome back to Crossout Basics. This video is my guide to generators in 2021. We will discuss their design and purpose along with some pros and cons of each one. So let's get started. The first logical question you might be wondering to yourself is, what is the purpose of a generator and why do I need one? When it comes to building a vehicle in Crossout, one of the limiting factors of your creation is based on a resource known as energy. Nearly all weapons, modules, engines, and radar in the game consume energy once they are placed on your vehicle. Cabins are your primary source of energy and can vary in the amounts that they offer. When you initially start playing Crossout, you really don't need any more energy than what a cabin can provide. But as you progress through the game into higher power scores, better parts will become available to you and thus will require more amounts of energy. This is where generators come into play. Similar to cabins, generators provide your build with additional amounts of energy which can then be spent on various parts. Currently, the maximum amount of energy points that can be reached in this game is 16. The next question is, which generator should you get? Again, this depends on the needs of your build, but for now, Let's go through each one starting with the cheapest and working our way up. The first generator on our list is the Big G Generator, which is a rare part that can be crafted within the Lunatics faction. Contrary to its name, this generator is one of the smallest, and it's also the lightest, weighing in at 36 kilograms. If we divide the durability of the Big G by its 36 kilograms, we get a durability to weight ratio of 2.8 which means that for every one kilogram of weight, you're getting roughly 2.8 points of durability. The downside of this generator is that it will only provide your build with one point of energy, but the good news is that the explosion damage is low. To find out exactly what those damage numbers are, I set up a small test build using the Nova Cabin, which has a durability of 419 points. Now, although generators can damage any part of your build once they explode, this test is specifically looking at the direct blast damage to your cabin, which is indicated by a yellow number. After running several tests, I initially thought that 73 was the end result. But during this process, it occurred to me that the placement of the generator could possibly affect the outcome. So I tested it. And sure enough, the amount of surface area that faces or comes in contact with your cabin will directly impact the amount of damage it receives. So with that being said, the range of direct blast damage from the Big G is approximately 73 to 81 points, with eight being the difference. So what kind of build can make good use of a Big G generator? Here's just one example. This build consists of a growl cabin and two little boy cannons. Adding a Big G generator will give you that one extra energy required to run this build. The next generator on the list is the Ampere, or AMP for short. This is a special part that can be crafted from the Nomads faction, and it produces two points of energy. This generator is the same size as the Big G, but with an added bonus of having weld points on all sides, which makes it easier to place. The biggest downside of this generator is its 30 points of durability, making it the worst out of the group. It has a durability to weight ratio of 0.277, which is significantly lower than the Big G. So what about its direct blast damage? The range comes out to 308 to 331. So then, what kind of build would do well with an amp generator? Here's one I found on the exhibition. It's made up of a growl cabin, two Sinus O and two Vector machine guns, and one RN seal. With the addition of the amp generator, you now have full use of these parts. Next up on our list is the PU-1 Charge. This generator is also a special part, and it can be crafted by joining the Scavengers faction. This generator tends to be overlooked due to its large size, and the fact that the amp offers the same two points of energy. However, when you calculate its durability to weight ratio of 0.284, it's actually slightly better than the amp. And look at the health of this generator. Compared to its counterparts, it falls second only to the Apollo generator, 
Now, before we check out the charge generator's direct blast damage, I wanted to point out that all of these generators can easily be viewed and accessed by using the tech tree. This feature is something I've mentioned before in my other videos, and it really is a valuable tool in understanding all the parts this game has to offer. Okay, so now let's check out those damage numbers. The direct blast damage of the PU-1 charge is 119 to 179 points. That's a 60 point damage increase just from placing the larger surface side against the cabin. That's definitely something to keep in mind when building with this part. So what vehicle would pair well with this generator? Well, how about this one? It consists of a favorite cabin, four sledgehammers, one RN seal, and one chameleon. Adding the charge generator gives it that extra two points of energy it needs to run effectively, and the added weight really isn't an issue. Now we move on to the most controversial generator in the bunch, the gas gen. This is the only epic generator currently available in the game, and it can be constructed from the lunatics faction. It provides you with three energy, and its durability to weight ratio is 0.25, which is the worst rating of this category. To make matters worse, it only has 36 points of health to start with, it doesn't have the best weld points, and when you combine that with the highest blast damage of all the generators, you can see why this one tends to be avoided. But is it really as bad as it seems? Well, let's do some testing. Okay, so that's not gonna work. It looks like we need to upgrade our test build. For that, we'll go to the cohort cabin, which is fused to give us a total of 670 durability points. Hopefully this will give us better results. Wow. So the direct blast damage for the gas gen ranges from 506 to 646 points. Those are big numbers either way you configure it. So I guess now the question is, why would anyone use this generator? And if so, what build would you combine it with? The main reason is that the gas gen is currently the only generator that offers three points of energy. Another reason is that if you were to skip this generator and wait to craft the Apollo, you're looking at a cost difference of at least 2,900 coins. That's a really far price jump and an even longer wait time before you would be able to craft it. So what about a build design that would fit this generator? Here's a build that I actually made from scratch and it's one of my favorites. It's made up of one blight cabin, two incinerators, one cheetah engine, one Doppler radar, one chameleon MK2, and of course the gas gen. I've had more than my fair share of MVPs with this build and it even does great in raids and against Leviathan builds. You can find it on the exhibition under the name Fire Engine 23 if you're interested in trying it out. Now, I have to warn you, the volatility of this gas gen is definitely a factor you need to consider, and it can be destroyed very easily if you're caught off guard. But I also wouldn't underestimate its value, especially if you like to play this game for free. Our final generator on the list is the Apollo. This is a legendary part that can be crafted by joining Don's children, and it has a durability to weight ratio of 0.315. As we mentioned before, this generator will cost you quite a bit of money and or crafting materials to make, but the end result is the benefit of having plus four energy. Now let's check out its direct blast damage. Our low end blast damage was 355, but it looks like we need to upgrade our test build once more. Okay, so the final direct blast damage result was 355 to 451 points. 
with the difference being 96. And here is a build that makes good use of the Apollo generator. It's comprised of a quantum cabin, six goblins, two RN seals, a Doppler radar, and a chameleon MK2. As you can see, the Apollo is positioned in a way that would cause the least amount of blast damage, and it just looks cool all around. Now, before we wrap up this discussion, I wanted to point out a small but important warning about any generator that you use. If you're not familiar with this item, it's known as a detonating module. It's often used in fusion builds, and once it's activated, all parts attached to it will break away from your vehicle. In this case, I'm using it to demonstrate that in the event your generator is destroyed, but your cabin and weapons remain, you will only be able to use what your cabin's energy can provide. As you can see, two of my weapons are now inactive, so it is really in your best interest to protect your generator just as much as your other main components. So now that we've reviewed all the generators that are currently in the game, which one do you think is the best? Well, it's really up to each player to make that decision, but hopefully now you are better equipped to make the right choice that meets your needs. Well, that will conclude my guide to generators in 2021. I really hope you benefited from some of this information. If so, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you ever see me in game, feel free to say hello. Other than that, I'll see you here next time on Crossout Basics.